All right, so why am I telling you all about the sun's magnetic field? Because it's the driver of all of this solar activity. I just showed you how it's related to sunspots, and now I wanna show you a few other types of solar activity that are related. Um, one of these are associated with sunspots, and they're basically just hot clouds in the photosphere around the sunspots. So because the hot material is not able to well up into the sunspot, instead those bright regions are um, in kind of a bright cloud surrounding them, and this is called a plage. Not very exciting. More exciting is a solar prominence. This is a loop of gas and it's anchored to the surface and it tends to connect sunspots. So if you have, you know, your sunspot has a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole, then there's a loop of magnetic field line connecting those two spots. Gas can flow along those magnetic field lines and get caught in this prominence. And these are actually stable on the order of days or months. And they're also very large, but they're not permanent. Sometimes they fall back into the sun and sometimes they detach. All right, so mm, probably the most exciting of solar activity and also potentially the most damaging are solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These are two types of solar activity that are usually correlated with each other. The solar flares are what happens when the magnetic fields that are becoming disorganized and scramble snap and reorganize. That releases a tremendous amount of energy in the form of X-ray radiation. And so this is the uh, solar flare. It's the emission of X-rays in a sudden burst. Um, the thing that you see here that looks like a prominence that's escaping, that's a coronal mass ejection. So that's a uh, kind of collection of gas that actually detaches from the sun's surface and escapes. So you can imagine that this um, substance, it's made of, you know, atoms from the sun's surface, highly charged particles. When that comes flying through space uh, toward the earth, that could be bad for us, uh, more dangerous than the solar flare. And these two things don't travel at the same speed. Since the solar flare is made of light X-ray radiation, then it travels at the speed of light to earth. So after eight minutes, when it's released, we can detect it here. And um, since the material cannot move at the speed of light and moves slower than that, then we have a little bit of window of time after we measure a solar flare where we can say a coronal mass ejection might be coming and everyone should like buckle up their satellites because that's basically the, the biggest potential damage from coronal mass ejection is damage to satellites. All right, so we can look in lots of different wavelength ranges. Um, in order to kind of see the different information about solar activity. So starting up here with these kind of gray images, um, a magnetic field diagram called a magnetogram shows a high region of magnetic field. It's kind of colored black and white here. And then when we look at the visible light in the photosphere, you can see that that region of magnetic field um, activity is related to the location of sunspots. We can look at the photosphere and see those sunspots throughout the infrared. And then as we start to look in higher energy ranges, we can see um, high energy associated with solar flares in the region of the sunspots. So we don't see the solar flares when we look in the visible range because they're emitted in the x-ray. But when we look in the x-ray, then we see those solar flares. So um, there are solar observatories that are constantly monitoring the sun, um, checking out sunspots, um, watching for solar flares so that we can predict the arrival of coronal mass ejections. 